Is this really what you want to be doing, David? Yes. There seems to be a big push for gastro-type pubs. Right. And I've always liked pubs, so if I can combine the cooking and running a pub at the same time, thank you, Lord. <laughs> They have just one hour to cook a two-course meal of their own design. Only one will win a place in Friday's quarter-final. David, we're actually seeing you work. Yes. That's good for a change. <laughs> Tell us what two dishes you're going to cook for us. Over there I've got sea bream, which has been stuffed with lemon and parsley, and we have potatoes and fennel. Are you OK or do you need some grapes for your fish, David? No grapes today. I've decided against them. And what's, what's in our bowl? That is cake mixture. I'm going to fry off the mango and pour the cake mixture over the top, straight into the oven, and then turn it out onto the plate. Is this really what you want to be doing, David? Yes. There seems to be a big push for gastro-type pubs. Right. And I've always liked pubs, so if I can combine the cooking and running a pub at the same time, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Very, very calm, very organised, understand what he's going to deliver. Really lovely piece of fish with potatoes and fennel, done beautifully, is actually on the style of a good restaurant. If he makes no mistakes, actually he's got a very, very safe menu. 22-year-old Ali wants to prove she has the skill despite her youth and is gambling everything on an Asian-inspired menu. Ali, Hello. there are a huge array of ingredients here. It's basically... A uh, really coconutty chicken curry from the Bombay region. And that's our main course, is it? That's your main course. And then for starter, is what, it's called prawn chat. And I've got mint in it and coriander. So it sort of freshens up your palate and then go in for the curry. So this is your, your piece that says, make me a quarter finalist. Yeah. Are you going to get it done in time? Hopefully. Hopefully? It's Master Chef. Yes, I will get it done in time, definitely. You go one pinch too many on any of those strong flavours and the whole thing has gone to pieces. She's got to understand that spicing completely. Halfway, guys, you've had half an hour. Charles, are you enjoying the competition? I am, yes. Do you sometimes sit here and think, why have I put myself through this again? Sometimes, especially this morning in the kitchen. And I was sheltered out quite a lot, but other than that, I'm enjoying it. Are these dishes, Charles, good enough to make you a quarter finalist? I hope so. I put a lot of effort into it. At least I think so. It would please us if we could see you looking a bit happier. <laughs> Home cook Charles is sticking to what he knows best and is cooking two Caribbean-inspired dishes. I think Charles still has a long way to go to lift that food from good home Caribbean cooking into winning championship food. Caribbean understands the food, brought up with it, lived with it, taught by his mum, knows how to cook. It's anybody's game. Five minutes, guys, five minutes. That's it, guys, all done, all said. Charles has made aubergine and garlic dip for his starter, followed by Caribbean rice with grilled chicken. Smooth, smooth aubergine. A hell of a lot of garlic. I can see me going in for two or three dips. I can't see me finishing the bowl. Some serious, seriously strong flavours and great textures. There's a huge amount of garlic. I might say probably a little bit too much for my palate. Charles, goodbye to the dip. Hello, chicken. So you don't normally you don't normally griddle the chicken. No. You obviously cook with a lot of rice. Your rice is beautifully seasoned. You say you don't often griddle chicken. I believe that. I think your chicken's slightly over. I would suggest that you shouldn't do it with the breast, and therefore I would rather use a piece of thigh meat so it stays nice and moist. Okay. Your food is, of course, food from the home. Can that get raised to restaurant level? I think I can take that to the next level, yes. Ali's starter is a king prawn chat with an onion and coriander salad. For her main course, she's cooked a chicken and coconut masala curry. I would like to know how anybody in their right mind is going to eat that much coriander.
in there, there are some lovely sweet flavours. Tomatoes, spices, the prawns are cooked well. I just, I don't like this. Right. I don't like this big bond of coriander on the side at all. Very nice. Creamy, slight hint of chilli. I think the prawn is cooked really, really well. Very, very nice. Shall we move from our prawns to our main course? Yeah. It's well spiced, it's well balanced, it's well flavoured, it's well cooked and it's well constructed. Delicious. I think you know what you're doing with the spice pots. Your rice is beautifully cooked. The whole thing is quite delightful. You come in here and dazzled us with some spices. But what about the basics? I think, yeah, I do know the basics. And I think the basics are in the dish anyway, and then you add that extra layer on top. Well done. Thanks, Sally. Thank, Thank you. David has cooked a whole baked bream with fennel, potatoes and cherry vine tomatoes. For dessert, he's attempted an upside-down mango tart, but his sponge is undercooked. Wonderful baked fish. Sweet and acidic fennel, great flavours, great textures. I think it is cooked absolutely beautifully. You have to look at it and say, well, yeah, great food. Is it competition food? Shall we go from our fish to our mango tart? We've got a tart which is near on inedible. Yep. Exactly. You're a brave man. It's sweet from the mango and the sponge should have made it become a really lovely soft pudding. Of course, the sponge has become a bit doughy and it's a real shame. How disappointed are you? Bitterly disappointed. I can't believe I've let myself down with that. I really can't. I'm choked, actually. You worked really hard today. Some great food, some exceptional surprises. We can only have one winner. And that winner... ..is Ali. Congratulations. Well done, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so shocked. I really didn't think I was going through. Well done. Congratulations. Bitterly disappointed with myself. I'll keep cooking. That won't stop me cooking. It'll just stop me cooking mango tarts. I still have that fire within me. I've still got the passion to cook. I will continue cooking. It hasn't dented my dreams in any way. I really, really want to win this so much. If I won, it would just be an absolute dream come true and it would open so many doors to me. 